It is interesting that Bream stresses the need for people to have opening windows, which makes conserving energy very difficult. It is impossible to balance a ventilation system when people can select how much fresh air they want. Bream also talks about having air intakes no less than 10 meters away from external sources of pollution, which means having no opening windows less than four florals um, up in a city. Yet that conflicts with the need to have self-regulating ventilation. Similarly, it is considered important for people to control their immediate environment in terms of light, but yet you cannot allow personal intervention if a building has a fully computerized building management system. This shows the need to balance the objectives of green accreditation with good practical common sense. Carbon dioxide monitoring. People breathe in air and remove the oxygen and replace it with CO2. If the level of CO2 gets too high, people will start to feel dizzy. There should be no difficulty with the air in a building if it is changed at regular intervals. However, it is still important to monitor CO2 levels and to adjust the air handling system as and when necessary. And there are points available. Nitrous oxide. This heading includes various nitrogen compounds like nitrogen dioxide and nitric oxide. These compounds play an important role in the formation of smog and acid rain. NOx usually forms when fuels are burnt at high temperatures, the main sources of vehicles, power stations, and industrial boilers. The air in a large building needs to be monitored, so this is just another test on the list. Environmental tobacco smoke. In most commercial buildings today, there is a ban on smoking. In all the major cities of the world, it's possible to see groups of people standing outside in the wind and the rain puffing away on a cigarette. In Romania, architects are often proud that there are balconies on every floor of an office block so that people can go quickly outside to have a smoke. The fact that opening doors for people to go outside means wasting energy is regarded as a fact of life. The notion that a person might leave their desk, put on a coat, travel downstairs, go through security, have a smoke and reverse the whole process, and so waste 15 minutes several times a day is not taken to be a problem. Think what each cigarette costs the environment. No one smokes like the Japanese. When I worked on Sony's European headquarters, there was a smoking room on every floor. Meetings were held in the smoking room. Telephone calls were made in the smoking room. Laptops were used in the smoking room. All that is needed is a small air extract system to keep a slight negative pressure in the room. The air in most buildings is changed at regular intervals, so this is part of the air that is just thrown away. So filtering is not necessary. A smoking room is therefore a green feature as it stops external doors being opened and cuts down wasted people movements, which are important in tall buildings. The secret is lateral thinking every step of the way. Always look for the win-win. This furniture is making me feel ill. Interior design and furniture. The way that a building is laid out has a tremendous effect upon how the users perceive it and the way that the built environment functions. Services engineers always have a difficult task because they usually have to produce a large space that is then divided by interior designers. Equipment like fire sprinklers, luminaires, and ventilation grills are always in the wrong place. A bright, wide open space can become very dark when partitions are put in place. Selecting light colored finishes also reduces the need for high light levels. More importantly, well lit vertical surfaces reduces eye strains for computer users. If the human eye goes from light to dark, back to light, the pupil has to contract and dilate, and after time, this will cause headaches. Looking out of a building and then back inside will also cause headaches. There are many examples where a good knowledge of human physiology and psychology can result in better buildings. Low emitting paints, adhesives, etc. There are over 20,000 industrial chemicals in common usage in the world today. We know how a couple of hundred of them affect people with any certainty. The rest are a big mystery. What happens when they interact is even more uncertain. Certainly when an office is new, there are a lot of fibers and chemicals in the air. So for a few months, it is good to have two air changes an hour. After a few months, this can be dropped back to one air change an hour. Sound insulation. Sound can come from outside a building or from within a building. Where heavy Equipment like chili units are placed on roofs. It's important to ensure that the vibration is not transferred into the structure. 
Even more important for winning accreditation points is that the air handling units can create noise and that this does not annoy the neighbors. The same applies to things like traffic entering and exiting the site. Facilities management, the friends you never need to meet. If a building is to be subdivided between several companies, then the facilities manager will usually be employed by the owner of the development. If the building has a single tenant, there might be more sense for the occupier to employ the manager. Besides the manager, there will also be a need for engineers who can do everything from freeing people trapped in lifts to changing light bulbs. Ideally, there should be at least one engineer in a building when it is occupied. Facilities managers are there to manage the building, and they cannot do that if the various monitoring systems are not in place. This means that a comprehensive BMS system is required to monitor all the key subsystems. Maintenance manuals. No building can be granted a practical completion certificate until the manuals are complete, and this means that all the test certificates are in place. There is an art to creating good manuals, and an international client will expect to see manuals that are of the very highest standard. Usually interactive copies of the manuals and all the as-built drawings should be kept on a computer for quick access. Remember also that in Romania, there are laws 10 and laws 50. All the data that is required by law 10 and law 50 will part, form part of the documentation that has to be handed over with the building. If you have doubts, then you need to employ a specialist, but there are points available if you do the job properly. Health and safety. Managing a building will be getting a lot more complicated in the next five years when EU regulations start to come into force in Romania. You might think that there is a lot of paperwork at the moment. You have seen nothing yet. But even health and safety issues form part of the manuals. You cannot ask a man to maintain something if he is not fully briefed and if any possible dangers have not been pointed out to him. Commissioning. Before any building is handed over by the contractor, it is normal for it to be thoroughly commissioned and every system checked and tested. Just carrying that out should be a point of standard procedure, but you can also get points for it. Servicing. All equipment needs to be serviced. Unfortunately, in the last few years, considerable pressure has been placed on facility managers to cut costs. The result is that often equipment is allowed to run until it fails. Lighting is a good example of this. All lights have a finite life, but the output of any lamp will start to decline long before it fails. The lighting system in a building is designed to deliver a set quantity of light, and this assumes that the lamps are giving close to optimal output. Lamps should therefore be replaced after a given time period and not when they fail. They also need to be replaced like with like. All the lamps should be replaced in one operation. This means that detailed records have to be kept. Monitoring consumption. Any good facilities manager will be monitoring the amount of energy, water and consumables that are going through his building. At regular intervals, he will be preparing reports for the building's owner and tenants and trying to control costs. With a modern BMS system, all the inputs and outputs of a building are monitored and costed automatically. This is a very important job because multinationals are always looking at every item of expenditure and asking for savings. Controlling costs. Money and energy are closely related. The premises manager is probably the one person who has real control over how much energy a building will use over its life. Particularly with a green building, he has been given a very sensitive and complex machine to operate. Reducing the temperature of a building by just one degree centigrade can have a dramatic effect upon heating costs in winter, and lowering the temperature by one degree centigrade in summer can also have a dramatic effect on power consumption. Waste management. One of the most important functions of a facilities department is to collect and process waste. If there is a segregated waste collection system available outside a building, then it is important to sort waste. Unfortunately, many people cannot be bothered to do this at their workstation. As a result, it may be necessary to have a member of staff whose task it is to try and ensure that like waste goes with like. It also means that a large waste storage room has to be provided. What is always interesting to me is that very few buildings in Romania have a loading bay, unlike, say, London or New York. If the space is available, then separate compactors 
can be provided for all the primary categories of waste. Handling and sorting waste is a complex task that can be planned at the outset. It is not an afterthought. There are points available just for putting all the facilities in place. And then finally, there are a few bonus points for making special efforts in non-specific areas that are available both under BREAM and LEED. In conclusion, therefore, this has been a very rapid run through some of the topics that go into designing and managing a green building. A green building is still a building. It is just that standards have to be higher than normal. Remember that you can have a green building, but that is no good if it's not legal. There are many low laws and codes that have to be complied with. And today, no multinational is going to take a building unless all the paperwork is complete. My advice to you today is to convert all this information into aid memoirs, a simple set of checklists. As the Americans might say, when you are up to your arse in alligators, it is easy to forget that you are there to drain the swamp. You cannot hold all this data in your head. And if you try and make the rules up as you go along, you will fail. Ultimately, every team is just a collection of individuals trying to work together. On a project, getting the clients team, the design team, the contractors and the suppliers to work together is almost impossible unless there is a script. Someone has to produce a coordinated plan. Today, you've been handed just a sample document that I produced for concrete frames. I'm just giving this as an example. This is the sort of document that every team needs to have on every aspect of the job. If you think that getting green accreditation is about ticking boxes, then you will fail. You might think that you've ticked enough boxes, but the examiner might not agree. And if all you get is a certificate, then you have also failed. You should also be making money out of going green because you have better management systems in place and are scrutinizing every decision that is made. This is all about win-win. The environment sh should win, but you should also win. Thank you.